recently, the Delta variant of COVID-19 has been spreading rapidly in the United States. In this video, I will discuss why the Delta variant is more contagious and what we should do to contain its rapid transmission. The Delta variant was first identified in December 2020. It is about 60% more transmissible than the already contagious Alpha variant, which is the dominant strain in the United States. So far, the Delta variant has spread to 98 countries. The Delta cases in the United States has been doubling every two weeks lately. According to the CDC, the Delta variant was responsible for 26% of new COVID-19 cases as of June the 19th, 2021. By mid-June, 99% of all new coronavirus cases in the United Kingdom were caused by the Delta variant infection. This table shows that the percentage of Delta cases has tripled in California from May the 21st, 2021 to June the 21st, 2021. Now, the Delta variant is accountable for 36% of all new COVID-19 cases in California. Several mutations in the gene that encodes the coronavirus spike protein are believed to play an important role in the enhanced transmission of the Delta variant. The spike proteins are mushroom-like proteins that are embedded in the viral envelope. To start the process of infection, the spike protein of the coronavirus must first latch onto a receptor called ACE2 on human cells. This receptor is found on alveolar epithelial cells that line the lungs as well as on many other cell types in humans. The viral envelope then fuses with the human cell membrane, allowing the virus to release its genetic material inside the cell. The infected cell manufactures and assembles the viral particles and releases them outside of the cell. The newly made coronaviruses can infect other healthy cells or be expelled out of the human body to infect other people. The mutant spike protein helps the Delta variant bind to the ACE2 receptor more tightly and fuse with human cells more efficiently. COVID-19 vaccines are designed to elicit neutralizing antibody specific for the viral spike protein. The mutations reduce the affinity of the antibody to spike protein and thus make the neutralizing antibody less effective. In addition, the mutant spike protein on the Delta variant is better able to fuse human cells together. The viral spread by cell-to-cell -cell fusion facilitates the viral evasion from immune responses and enhances the virus to spread faster inside the infected individuals. Taken together, the mutant spike protein increases the infectivity of the Delta variant and facilitates its partial evasion from the human immune responses. Therefore, humans can be more easily infected by less amount of Delta variant and the infected individuals can produce more viruses which can cause rapid transmission. Fortunately, current COVID vaccines can still induce fairly potent immunity against the Delta variant infection. Studies have shown that both the Pfizer and the AstraZeneca vaccines can induce protective antibodies and elicit T-cell responses against the Delta variant. The cartoon on the left illustrates that the neutralizing antibodies can bind to and inactivate the Delta variant to prevent infection. The cartoon on the right shows that the activated T cells called cytotoxic T lymphocytes are capable of targeting the infected cells and initiate a process called apoptosis or programmed cell death, which kills the infected cells abort the processes of viral replication and inactivates the viruses. 
Recent data demonstrated that although a single dose of either the AstraZeneca or Pfizer vaccine is only 33% effective against symptomatic disease caused by the Delta variant, a second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine boosts the protection to 60%. Similarly, two doses of the Pfizer vaccine are more effective at 88%. In addition, both the AstraZeneca and the Pfizer vaccines provide excellent protection against hospitalization from the Delta variant infection. Although the current COVID vaccines in the U.S. are quite effective against the Delta variant infection, the rate of vaccination falls below the expectation, especially in the younger population. According to the Mayo Clinic, 9.2% of people younger than the age of 18 have been fully vaccinated as of July the 3rd, 2021. In contrast, 52% of people ages 18 to 64 and 83% of people ages 65 and above have been fully vaccinated. The inadequate vaccination rate indicates that the Delta variant has ample opportunity to continue to spread in the United States in the next few months. People should be aware that the Delta variant infection causes different symptoms. Most infected people experience headache. Other symptoms include sore throat, runny nose, fever. The symptoms caused by the infection from previous COVID-19 strains, such as cough and loss of smell, are rare among the Delta variant infected people. Because the Delta variant is highly contagious, indoor masking, physical distancing, and frequent hand washing in addition to prompt vaccination continue to be the best strategies to contain the transmission by the Delta variant. Thank you for watching.